Welcome back to Sip to Tell the Fans. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're doing a little something different. But obviously, today is Tuesday, and normally we have the More Sip to Tally Power Rankings on the More Sip to Tally channel. But reasons that <laughs> just know <laughs> right now, the Sip to Tally Power Rankings, the More Sip to Tally Power Rankings, they just Sip to Tally Power Rankings probably for the rest of the season. So we're going to stay here on the main channel with the Power Rankings, and we're going to Pretty much keep the train rolling like we've been doing. We're going to talk about our biggest movers and shakers. We're going to talk about teams uh, 12 through 9. And then we'll have our graphics for teams 8 through 1. So without further ado, let's bring on this week, which is week 15's um, Sip the Tally Power Rankings. We'll talk about our biggest movers and shakers to start this thing off. Um, our biggest gainers of the week, the Seattle Seahawks. Huge, 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 huge win over the Eagles. Um, what was that? Monday night, and then the Las Vegas Raiders with a, a massive blowout Thursday night. So both of those teams went up seven spots in the, the power rankings this week. Our biggest loser, the Pittsburgh Steelers. I uh, have them there at 7-7. Seven and seven. They've lost three in a row. They were minus six. They dropped down to 20. Uh, the two biggest winners, I'll tell you where they are. The Raiders jumped up to 27. Seahawks jumped up to 14. So those are our two biggest winners uh, and losers of the week for week 15 in the NFL. Let's talk about teams 12 through 9. All right, coming in at number 12, Indianapolis Colts. Indianapolis Colts coming in at uh, 8 and 6. As far as record-wise, they're a tie with the AFC South for first place. Now, I don't know the tiebreakers, but they, they have the same record. Them, Houston, Jacksonville all have the same record, 8 and 6. But I have the Texans coming in at number 12. They pulled off a win versus the Steelers, 30 to 13. And that kind of puts them in position to not only make a playoff run, but make a run at the division, I'm sorry, the conference division title. So the Colts coming in at 12. Number 11, another team in that same division, the Houston Texans. Now they didn't have their starter um, Sunday, but they pulled off a win versus the Tennessee Titans with the backup, 19 to 16, a hard fought win. A game that I really thought they were going to lose at some point late in that game, but they came back, forced, made a, made the game go to overtime, and pulled out a win in overtime. So, and again, tie record wise with Jacksonville for first place in that uh, division with Jacksonville and the Colts, they all are eight and six. Three teams out of four in that division are eight and six. So it's going to be interesting to see how the AFC South shakes up these next couple of weeks. Coming in at number ten. Probably one of the hottest teams in the NFL right now, the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills banged the Cowboys upside their head Sunday for a 31-10 victory. Uh, Josh Allen looked like his old self running and throwing the ball. Uh, the defense for the Bills came through and did what they needed to do to shut down Dak. Uh, I ain't going to say shut down Dak's MVP bid, but put a real big dent in Dak's MVP bid, at least for this week. Uh, and the Buffalo Bills won that game 31-10. to Coming in at number nine, another hot team that I think and another dangerous team that's doing it with a backup quarterback, the Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati Bengals have won three in a row. They're sitting at eight and six. They beat the Vikings, who are seven and seven, 24 to, 27 to 24, and um, they're just hanging around, just hanging around. They lost their quarterback, Jake Browning. Uh, not Jake Browning. What's Jake? Whatever Jake's, whatever Browning's first name is. I think it's Jake. Maybe it may not be. Put it in the comment section what Brown's first name is. Um, he's came in and, you know, once he, after that first game and he was kind of not really on kilter, he got his bearings about him and he's finding them guys that do what they do. And so they've been winning games. They've won three in a row. They're at eight and six. They're still in the playoff hunt. And they're number nine in the uh, power rankings for week 15. Let's get into – our teams with the graphics, teams eight through one. Let me get those guys on the, on the screen here. All right, first one up, Cleveland Browns. So we got Cleveland Browns coming in at number eight. And what they're doing with Joe Flacco at quarterback, I don't want to say it's amazing because they beat the Bears, but still, they're winning games, and that puts them at uh, nine and five, got them at number eight on the more sip, I mean, on the sip to tally power rankings or more sip to tally power rankings, same thing. Same channel, <laughs> all the same thing. Potato, tomato, potato, po potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Same difference. But anyway, back to the Browns. Um, Joe threw for three seventy four, if I'm not mistaken. 
Uh, even though he had three interceptions, he still found a ways to get uh, Njoku the ball. And what Njoku's doing, man, is from the tight end position, that's, that's a guy we normally don't mention much with the upper echelon of tight ends, but but what he's doing, he got to start being mentioned with him. Played that game, I think it was versus Baltimore, after got burned in the face with the mask on, produced that game, and has had a great season. I don't know his stats right off in front of me, but just think if you just think about think about it. If you watch highlights of pretty much every team, no matter who your team is, and you go on YouTube and watch your long form highlights, the Joku making plays every week. No matter who's at the quarterback, Deshaun. PJ, uh, Joe, uh, DTR, whatever, whoever their four quarterbacks is, the Joku making plays. So uh, he he's doing a good job offensively of keeping them guys in there. And they're throwing them little short routes, and he's just getting a lot, a lot, a lot of yak. A lot of yak. Next up, coming at number seven, Kansas City Chiefs. Now, the Chiefs, um, they're nine and five. It's that same spot. They're number seven as last week. Um, the Chiefs last week, let's see, let me see, let me get to it. Patriots, 27-17. Now, they took a knee late in the game. They could have scored and probably went up 34-17 and doubled the Patriots up. But um, e- even though they won by 10, they, did, they still don't look as dominant as they are. But they find a way to win games. Um, they just look vulnerable. But they're 9-5. Um, the upper le- echelon teams, I think, can beat them. But they're, they're finding ways to win versus teams that they probably should blow out. Like the Patriots, they should have beat the dog crap out of the Patriots, and they didn't. But the fact that they got nine wins, I can't drop them down too far. I got a, a win in the NFL is hard to get. So I still got them at number seven right now. Going to number six. This team is still there because of their early season success. They've lost three in a row. Coming off this loss this week to, and most of their other losses came to top teams in the league. This is the first loss that came to a, a team that wasn't considered one of the top teams. Now, at one point, Seattle was leading the NFC West over San Francisco, but they fell on some hard times, and they're now 7-7. Seven and seven, But they got their seventh win versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles don't necessarily look right, but they have a talent, a bunch of talent. And I think they're just in a lull right now. I don't know if it's kind of waiting on the playoffs to show up or you know they're just not in sync with each other offensively and defensively. But they've lost three in a row. Two of them to really good football teams. And not to say Seattle sucks. Seattle's a good football team too, but still. That's why they're still here because two of those losses are versus upper echelon teams. And this week right here may have been a anomaly, so to speak. But shout out to Seattle for, for pulling that, that victory out. And that's one of the reasons why Seattle jumped up seven spots in the power rankings because of this victory over the, the Eagles. Going to number five, Dallas Cowboys. Laid an egg to the Bills. There's, there's really no other way to put it. 31-10. Uh, no way to beat around the bush. No way to give out kudos. They're still, what, 10 and, what are the Cowboys? 10 and 4. But what they pulled Sunday is, what well, they just laid an egg. I don't know if they overlooked them or what. But the Bills are, the Bills are dangerous. I'll just say that. The Bills are dangerous. The Bills' record don't don't show how well rounded that team is, and they they found a way to 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 maximize Dalvin Cook and integrate him into the offense, and still use Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs. So the, they they beat up on the Cowboys pretty bad. But Cowboys had great early season success. They got double digit wins. They still stay in the top five. Going to number four, Detroit Lions. Now, Detroit Lions have had an up and down, up and down season, but they still, still have 10 wins. This is probably the most wins they've had in a while. And a team that I thought that they would struggle with, the Denver Broncos, who have been playing good football as of late, the Lions dominated them wholeheartedly, offensively and defensively. Uh, that's why they're number four right now. They beat the Broncos 42-17, to and they basically just mollywhopped the Broncos. And um, Detroit Lions are dangerous. They're dangerous. They're a dangerous team because – they're young. They they play hard. They have a, a plethora of offensive weapons. They probably have the best offensive line in the league. And um, as long as Jared Goff don't shoot them in the foot, they 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 gonna be pretty darn good. They be pretty darn good. Moving on, to number three. Coming off a bad, bad, bad loss last week, the Miami Dolphins b- bounced back. 
and beat up on the Jets. 30-0. Complete shutout of the Jets. Um, that's always good. That's always good. Anytime you can shut a team out in the NFL, that's a good thing, especially with, with the Dolphins being known as an offensive team for them de their defense to go get a zero on the board. I don't care if Zach Wilson was a quarterback, and we know the issues that the Jets have offensively because of the quarterback position. Getting a zero on the board is still getting a zero on the board in the NFL. So salute to the Dolphins for that, and I have them at number three uh, in the power rankings for this week, week 15. Number two, moving up a spot, Baltimore Ravens. Went to Jacksonville, took care of business. Uh, Jacksonville kind of gave the Ravens some some opportunities, and the Ravens capitalized on them. And um, I don't want to say, if it's not for a blown coverage, the Jacksonville probably don't score. A blown cut. Well, I take that back. A blown coverage and a botched fake spike. And this fake spike wasn't botched for those that didn't see it. They fake spiked it and threw a pass, and the guy got tackled. He went out of bounds, but basically his forward, forward momentum was stopped, and so they ran the clock, and they weren't able to get a spike to get a field goal. So if it wasn't for those two plays, they they don't score at all, and it's a complete domination by the Baltimore Ravens defense. And then number one on the list, we all know. Like, there's not much to be said about what San Francisco is doing. The funny thing is, um, and the crazy thing is that this team, who's number one, plays – up oh, wrong. This team that's number one plays this team right here, who's number two, Monday. And that's going to be a super, super exciting game. And then the week after that, this team that's number two plays this team that's number three. And that's going to be even more exciting to come out to, to see who may get the number one seed in the AFC. So we got a lot of good football coming up in the month of December over this this uh, Christmas and New Year's break. So make sure you stay tuned in and locked in. And again, San Francisco 49ers are the cream of the crop uh, this week again. And until you beat them, they're going to stay there. So the whole list should be on the screen on one of these sides right now. You take a look at it, see where your team is. Let me know in the comment section whether you agree or disagree. And this is the Sip the Tally Power Rankings Week 15 edition. I thank you for coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. And I'll see you soon. Peace and love.